So, hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, a couple of things have changed since I last spoke to you guys. For one, my hair has changed. What's new? And for another, I released my debut EP just over four weeks ago. I did mean to film this sooner, but that's just life, isn't it? So a couple of weeks ago, I asked everyone on Twitter and Instagram, and I think on Facebook, but I don't think anyone replied on Facebook, to ask me questions about the EP, my general music writing practice, or, you know, anything to do with making music, essentially. I could just say music. So on Twitter, Toby asks me, can you give us more insight into the process of compiling a track list? So he's being a little bit funny here because, uh, he actually played quite an integral part in helping me choose the track list um, and specifically the order of the songs as well. Um, he is actually the person to thank if you like Don't Go because I was not going to include it on my first EP or maybe on any EP, but he convinced me that it was good enough. So. Yes. <laughs> so really for the track list, I just started out with, first of all, picking the songs that I wanted to have is pretty essential. But then from there, deciding which songs sounded the best after the previous songs and sounded like they sort of led into them well. So it was less, initially at least, it was less a sort of thematic progression and more so just sonically. You know, does it sound good? So with a track list, I just wanted to make sure it flowed nicely. But naturally doing that, I found that the EP is sort of split up into two halves. So in the first half, I've got my sort of more boppy, upbeat songs. And then it actually works out really well in that at the interlude, that's when it starts to sort of slow down, become a little bit more reflective. Yeah, a little bit like more mellow, I guess. And I did know from the start I wanted the EP to open with that bass line from Runaways and I wanted it to end with the guitar strum in blue. So I had that to work around. So that was the only question I had on Twitter. Now moving on to Instagram. So Carrie has a couple of questions for me here. The first question is, can I use your music in a future movie because the sound is perfect? Yes. This is my absolute dream to have one of my songs in a movie. I'm studying media at the moment at uni and I'm majoring in screen production. So it's sort of just the perfect blend of my two favorite creative outlets together. So yes, please yes. <laughs> Gotta stay hydrated kids. Two questions in, my throat's killing me. So Carrie also asks, do you have a writing process? like writing music before lyrics or vice versa. Also, seriously, I love the EP. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. It means, it genuinely means so much to me. I really do take every comment and compliment to heart. So thank you. <laughs> um, generally, ideas seem to hit me all at once. So I will probably have an idea for a lyric and a melody at the same time. Uh, maybe not the chords, maybe the chords will come in later, or maybe the arrangement comes in later, but a lot of the time it all sort of comes to me as one idea. Um, but then there are other times when it doesn't and I start with the lyrics first or I start with the instrumentals first. So it really does depend on the song, but I'm gonna say probably eight times out of 10. I'm gonna simplify that four times out of five. Maths genius. I would say that I have the idea for the lyrics, the melody and the background instrumentals all at the same time. My good pal Risa asks me, well, I can't say that now because then everyone else is gonna think that they're not my good pals. You're all my good pals, thank you. I should actually specify by saying I do actually know all of these people, but uh, they were given no money or incentive. So. Don't sue me. So Risa asks me, what's your dream music setup? Honestly, whatever Jack Antonoff has, because I think that he is a genius. And if I can just have access to the tools that he has access to, I don't think I would ever leave the studio. My dream music setup would honestly be everything that I already have. 
um, but also a MIDI keyboard because the one I have right now doesn't plug into my computer. Has this turned into a Gus Johnson video with the mic and the keyboard? So yes, MIDI keyboard would be one. I would also really like a microphone that's a little bit better than this one I've got now. There's nothing wrong with this one at all. I would just like a high quality one. This is our dream music setup after all, you know? And also like just every instrument on the planet. If I could do that and if it was all like categorized and there was a little robot that would like get me every instrument, like if I asked it to like find the instrument. I don't know if this technology has been invented yet. But that's, that's what I want. I want a little AI assistant robot to help me locate every instrument in my massive chamber of instruments. And I'd also really like one of those like really shimmery electric guitars that Lana Del Rey has. You know, like that sound, that, that classic sound in so many of her songs. Like I'm thinking specifically in Shades of Cool, that guitar, I want that in my life. Chelsea asks me, which one of your songs was written most recently? My most recently written song is Just Another Day Without You Here. I mean, at least out of the ones I've released. So I wrote that one in March this year. So it was a really quick turnaround for that one because I released it in early August. It was a turnaround of about four and a half months. Taylor has a couple of questions for me. So she asks me, what song do you want to make a music video for? So I have attempted making music videos for my songs before but I don't know how I feel about having me in them yet. Um, especially because a lot of my songs don't really lend themselves to a music video necessarily that has choreography or, you know, is sort of upbeat enough. Like a lot of my music is stuff that you sit down, put your headphones in and listen to rather than, you know, making you want to get up and do stuff. That means that it would be quite a sort of artsy video. I think it's harder to make something dramatic on a smaller budget because you sort of have to suspend your disbelief a little bit because you don't have the resources to make it look serious enough, I guess. But if I had to pick one that I would like a music video for, I think that Prove Them Wrong really lends itself to a cute little music video. I think that would work well paired with visuals. Taylor wants to know the T. She asks me, which songs were inspired by real people and which weren't? So, let me just pull up the track list real quick. <laughs> so most of the time my songs are directly inspired by things that have happened in my life. These are songs I'm writing for myself, for me to perform. So, it's just another way for me to process things. So that sort of means that a lot of the time, most of the time, these songs are directly related to my life. But in terms of actually being about people, I'm not gonna name drop obviously. <laughs> Runaways is not about anyone. That was specifically written for a short film. Didn't end up being used, but it was still written for that. Prove Them Wrong, definitely was written about a person. Uh, kinda was written about a person. Don't Go also was, although not in the way that Prove Them Wrong and Kinda are specifically each about one particular person. Don't Go is more about a number of experiences I've had. Same goes for Unrequited Love. I can't really talk about Interlude because it's instrumental. <laughs> but same goes for Unrequited Love because it's written about a number of experiences. Just Another Day Without You Here was definitely written about a specific person. And Blue was written about a specific situation and specific people. So there you have it, inside scoop. This actually leads in really nicely to the next question. So Alice asks me, do you feel that you can write if nothing is happening in your life? I love this question because I really, unfortunately, do believe that things need to be a little bit stressful. They need to be a little bit different from the norm in whatever way that may be. They could even be, you know, positive things. But something needs to be happening in order for me to be inspired. The only time that I want to write songs is when I don't have the time because I'm too busy doing stuff that I want to write the songs about. <laughs> so I definitely think that I need something happening in my life. I mean, for example, like I look back at this EP and a lot of these songs 
I don't see them like this, but when I think back, a lot of them were inspired by some really difficult times. For instance, I wrote Blue when I found out that my parents were getting separated, and I wrote that song to myself to let me know that it was gonna be okay, you know, you're gonna find a way through. It's funny because uh, I do think, you know, if my parents didn't separate, I wouldn't have Blue. If I wasn't in a long distance relationship, I wouldn't have Just Another Day Without You Here. If I wasn't rejected constantly, I wouldn't have unrequited love. So there are a lot of these songs where I've managed to, I think at least, turn quite what could be quite painful situations and what were quite painful situations into something more, into something productive. And I don't look at these songs and, and feel sad. I look at them and I feel proud that I was able to express myself in a creative way. And I sort of just see them as little time capsules, almost. Like I listen to them and I think back to the time that I felt like that. And I go, huh, neat. <laughs> so to get back to the question, I cannot write. <laughs> Full stop. So to get back to the question, I cannot write if nothing is happening in my life. And that includes if nothing that positive is happening because I definitely have written quite positive songs. I guess I just haven't released them yet, but don't worry, there are some, there are some happy songs on their way. Alexandra asks me, did you record in a professional or an in-home studio? Definitely in-home. So pretty much this is my setup right here. I will clear my notebooks from my keyboard, put my Mac up here, rest my microphone really precariously up here and just record straight from here because I don't have a MIDI keyboard that plugs into my computer, which is a little bit of a nuisance. Uh, over here, I've got my guitars. I've got my ukulele. This is kind of my studio. That's kind of it. I just realized I've moved away from the microphone. Lily asks me, how long does it take you to write a song? And she says, obviously it's different every time, but still. This is a really interesting question though, because it, does vary for me. It goes one of two ways. So one way it can go is that everything is realized at once and I spend a whole day or I spend hours and hours of time or multiple days <laughs> getting this song done. You know, like I write it in an hour, I record it in, I mean, the fine tuning takes a lot longer, but I'll like record it in a couple of hours. Or I take verses that I, wrote when I was 15 and then revamp them and add more to them because I never finished the songs. So either no time at all or literal years is my answer to that question. Lily also asks, do you start songs with lyrics or like a certain sound or again, it probably differs. Yeah, so it definitely does differ. Most of the time, it's me coming up with the lyrics and the melody at the same time, like I said before, but sometimes I'll just be screwing around on Logic Pro X and come up with something. Like for instance, Don't Go, actually. I wrote starting from that synth sound and I did the instrumental all first and then the lyrics and the melody formed around that. Jess asks, would you be open to collaborating with other singers in the future for EPs to come? Definitely. In fact, I really find the songwriting and the producing process um, a lot more exciting than the singing part. I'm not too confident in my singing voice. I think I'm still working on finding a style that suits my voice the best. I suppose. So really, I would love to produce and write songs for other singers. I don't know if like doing a feature or a duet would be something that I'd be interested in, but I mean, yeah, I'd love to try. I'd, I would love to try to be fair, but I would really like to song write for other singers. Um, and I actually have been working on some production, although to be fair, not recently, because I've been really busy for another singer. So hopefully that will happen sometime soon if I organize myself and get my life together. And then to finish it all off, my dad has sent me a bunch of literal cues. So I did ask on Instagram for cues and I guess I cannot blame him. He, he did as I requested. Cheers, Dad. And that is it. Thank you very much for joining me on this wonderful journey. I've had a great time. Thank you everyone for sending in questions or sending me 
some really lovely supportive messages because I have had so much support since releasing this EP. So many people have been listening to it and letting me know what they think and it's awesome. Honestly, I am really overwhelmed by it. It's so motivating as well because I didn't expect it to get the response that it got. And yeah, it just makes me really excited about the future. It just makes me wanna, wanna do more and make more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye.